All right, in chapter five, we are going to start looking at probability distributions. Um, now, over the next couple of chapters, we will look at probability distributions, both for discrete variables and for continuous variables. Um, and in chapter five, we're going to focus on the discrete variables. Again, those ones that are countable. So let me kind of, again, give you that, um, that up high view here. So in chapter five, or in section five, one particular, particularly, we will um, be combining frequency distributions, which we did in chapter two, mean and standard deviation, which we looked at in chapter three, Sorry, a cat just walked by. Um, and probability, which we did in chapter four. Welcome to my real life. All right, so we're gonna be combining those three things kind of together. Um, so let's start out with just a little bit of, well, one definition and then some review of discrete and continuous, um, just to make sure we remember those terms from earlier in the course. So first thing, what is a random variable? Okay, a random variable is a rule that assigns a number to each outcome in the sample space. Okay, so every outcome basically gets a number. Now, that's going to sound a little weird, um, but it'll hopefully start to make a little bit more sense as we go. I'm going to give you an example, though. Okay, a rule that assigns a number to each outcome in the sample space, that could be as simple as we roll a dice, and the numbers we assign to the outcomes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, it could be we roll a pair of dice and we assign the numbers 2 through 12 to the outcomes because those would be the different sums that could result for rolling two dice. Okay, so I know it sounds a little confusing. It's actually not. It's looking more at the results of um, your sample space and then just saying, okay, so we're going to let 11 mean the sum was 11. Okay, and again, we'll go into that in a little bit more depth here in a bit. All right, so for each of these, what we're going to do is first decide if the variable given is discrete or continuous, and then state what values that variable could take on. So what are the numbers we could assign to the outcomes? Okay, so our variable is the time it takes for a light bulb to burn out. Okay, so is time discrete or continuous? Okay, we should know that time is continuous. We can break it down to minutes, seconds, fractions of a, of a second, etc. And then what are the possible times it could take? Now, I'm not talking about, well, it could be one second, it could be one year, it could be 10 years. Yes, it could be all of those things. But in general, if X represents the time it takes for a light bulb to burn out, basically it could be any time um, above zero. If you've ever like flipped on a light and you had it burn out like the split second you turned it on, you'll know that it can be a really, really quick amount of time or it can be a very long amount of time, okay? All right, B, the weight of a T-bone steak. So weights are also continuous because again, we can get those down to pounds and ounces and portions of ounces, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so what are the what are the different weights that could happen? Well, obviously the weight of your stake has to be bigger than zero, but there is an upper limit on that. The upper limit is whatever your cow is. Um, you can't have a T-bone stake weigh more than the cow, um, probably well less than the cow itself, the bones and so forth, but we'll get a little tongue in cheek there and make it the cow. Um, the number of free throw attempts before the first shot is made. Okay, so this one is countable. This is going to be discrete, okay? And then how many free throw attempts could you make or could you take before you make it? Well, it might take one, it might take two, it might take three, 
It might take a whole bunch. We don't know how many it would take. Um, but notice this is an equals, okay? Because it's discrete, it's equal. You can't have just greater than zero because you're not gonna shoot a free throw 1.67 times, for example, okay? And then D, in a random sample of 20 people, the number who are blood type A. So again, this is discrete, it is countable. And out of those 20 people, how many could have blood type A? Well, yes, one, two, three, et cetera. But don't forget, you could have nobody with a blood type A. So one, two, et cetera. And the most you could have with type A blood would be all 20 of them. And so in this case, there is an upper limit. Now, in this particular chapter, we are going to focus on those discrete random variables, the ones that have the equals in them, okay? There is one outcome, it is countable, and that is the number that we will be assigning to all of those different outcomes. And we're gonna be looking at that um, in greater detail in the next example.